the workshops, again, the magical passes will get you to heighten awareness to your energy body. The, re- the theater of infinity, by playing normal scenes again and again and again, but seeing them from your energy body will get you to heighten awareness. Then we'll probably have some dreaming practices. Then when we get in a state of heightened awareness, I think in New York, we're going to go out and just view the city. We're going to see this, this city that we look at every day with normal eyes. We're going to go out and probably it's going to look very different. We're going to take a walking tour, okay? And, um, and then, you know, this workshop is really focused on what you want to dream for yourself in your life. And so we're going to take you, because a lot of us, we have a dream that's buried way down deep inside of us. We don't dare bring it out. You know, we don't know how to do it. We're going to focus on that at the end of the workshop. How do we use all of this energy to make something new in our daily lives? From our second attention, we go out into the second attention. We bring something back to our daily lives. By activating the second attention with intention, we could create something we want to happen in this first attention. That's correct. And you do that through a magical pass or through a uh, uh, some kind of practice? No, it, it, it's a practice. It's it's another. It's a, a it's a slightly altered form of theater of infinity. And this is where you play scenes that have not been lived. You have not lived them yet, but you plan to live them. You plan to have that interview. You plan to talk to that investor. You plan. You plan. And so you go through these, and you play it once. Then you get more energy from your energy body. You go, okay, I'm going to do this different. I'm going to do this. And you play it again. You play it again. And when you go out in normal awareness, in daily life, and you then do it, you see your energy body at the workshop, or if you do this practice on your own, your energy body has already lived it. So when oh, you go so it can pull those world, circumstances to it. Yes. So when you go into the normal world and you're in that situation, your energy body will come to you. Sometimes it feels like deja vu. Of course, some of the circumstances may be different. But you've got your energy body with you. I see. So you practice a scene you really want to happen in, in your yeah. life. You want to get that yeah. raise from your boss. So you, yeah. you, you go in and, and you play in, and, and the guy playing your boss says, yes, you got that, you know, $20,000 yeah. raise or something like that. Oh, is, is that, and yeah. then is, that's it. Yeah, and, and, like that. yeah, that's right. And it's not like, it, that's just not it. It's like um, you, what you, you, we, we have you. We instruct you how to have a conversation with your boss. You know what makes you a good employee. You know the same things. What makes you worth that raise? What is those kinds of things? You know, mm-hmm. and but you're doing this not in normal awareness. You're doing this from heightened awareness. Oh, so by doing it in heightened awareness, yes, uh, you you have more access to the energy configurations making those realities happen that is correct because the normal state of humanity as i I think we alluded to earlier in this conversation was the human being okay i've got my one luminous sphere my physical body and then my energy body coats my physical body that is what we're supposed to be as i get up out of my bed every morning as i go brush my teeth i'm supposed to have my luminous sphere with me and we don't. And so this is what we teach at the workshop. Oh, so the luminous clarity. sphere gives you more power to accomplish things in the world. Exactly. The energy body is where all of your energy is. I mean, if you, you, that other uh, gentleman you had on the show, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now, who was talking about uh, to, to, Toltec traditions. Oh, also. Sergio Magana, yeah. Yes, yeah. Sergio. As he said, everything happens in the Nawal space, the dream in the dream you dream it from the noir space. Then when you do it in real tone all life, normal awareness life, your energy body comes with you because you've already dreamt it from your noir space. Mm. So I think that's an important point. By being in an altered state or non-ordinary reality, but with in touch with your energy body, the manifestations you want to create in the world seem to unfold easier. That's easier, different, and you see, part of the manifestations, again, because people, again, can go to just me, 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 I want a million dollars. The manifestations that will happen to you have to also benefit you and other people. Mm -hmm. Because the second attention, 
spirit you want to call it, infinity you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, is not about a single individual. It's about everyone. So if you getting a raise is going to benefit you and your company and, and, and. And the planet, yes. And the planet, and the birds, and the bees, and this, and you're going to promise to donate some of your time to go pick up trash on the highway, or whatever that is. You uh-huh. see what I mean? Those kind of intentions come true, because those kind of dreams is what infinity gives you the energy for. Ah, that's, what you're, that's, what you're, that's what your energy body is for, well, is the dreams of infinity. Right. This is why, uh, well, uh, Sergio says we're coming into the time where we'll be living the Nawal. So, I mean, we're coming into a time of collective awareness. At least he says Mm -hmm. this in uh, 2021 is when the sixth sun will fully emerge, according to his Mm -hmm. Toltec teachings, which, you know, the needs of the collective will be... um, as important or more important than the needs of the individual, those individual me, me, me understandings. Yes. Cause so, yes. yeah, yes. And we can see yes. that now with the internet and other things that are manifestations of, of more of our collective nature, I would think. Right. And know? there's so many companies made by young entrepreneurs where, you know, part of their proceeds are helping the people in Africa or they sell the products of the poor villages, the, the people of the poor villages of Africa here. You know what I mean? So that is really a dream that is helping them and helping these other people. You see what I mean? It's, it's those kind of dreams. Yes. You know, so and, and even do you if feel that's... I want to have a child, that, uh, you know, I want my child to be a doctor. I want my child to be et cetera, et cetera. That can be an amazing spirit dream. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, I can make a garden, a vegetable yeah. garden that will feed, feed you know. No, I think this is what the enlightened entrepreneurship is all about that seems to be coming together now. It's like, uh, I don't think we have a choice. So it does feel as if the, as if the Nagual awareness is, is kind of um, overtaking this idea of this just for me, the greed, the corporate greed, the polluting the earth, I mean. Not to get yeah. into that whole thing, but a, I think there's more of a collective something happening. Yeah, I agree. And we're seeing everything crash. I mean, the greed and many things crashing and how certain individuals want to hold on to it so tightly and won't let go, you know? So, mm. you know. So, I mean, it's a great scene. Wasn't that a great scene in Avatar where they actually said, you know, it wasn't just one little nation of people against the nation of robots. The Earth the earth came and fought her own battle. And isn't that what right. we're seeing? Yes. It's, it's, there's another scene in Horton Hears a Who. It's like that. Yes, we're exactly. All... <laughs> exactly. You see? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's this kind of theme. Um, so this, uh, you're calling it uh, the workshop a call to awakening action. Is that, yes. is that what you're talking yes. about then? How to make things happen in your life? Is that the action yes. you're talking yes. about? That's correct. So, Exactly. Well, you, you're not you're not going to be here, though, are you? No, my uh, my protege, um, Naeem Rez, is going to be there. Yeah, she's uh, going to be there. Naeem. My colleague. Yeah. Your colleague, so, uh, Naeem. And, yeah. um, she, and I think you're interviewing her when she gets there. I, I am going to do a television interview. If you were here, I would do a television interview with oh, you, of too. Course, of course, of course. But um, maybe I'll be in... Uh, you're based out of L.A. mostly, right? Yes, exactly. But we do travel a lot. We give international seminars. So, you know, I mean, if you're in L.A., come and see us. Well, I'd love to go to Mexico with Carol on the next trip. When is that happening? Well, Mexico happens the first week of May, every first week of May. I'm sorry, Carol. I mean, Carol Tiggs doesn't accompany you on the trip. And this this trip, we will be going to Oaxaca, which is not the Uh. church in Tula. So it's different. Um, But we will make our way back to Tula again in a couple of years. I mean, right now, I mean, we're going to Oaxaca for a while. We went to Tula for about three or four years, then we're going to Oaxaca for two years, then we're going to Why, Maya, Maya why Maya. Oaxaca are you going to? Excuse me? But remember this, all the books in the Zapotec teachings. You remember all that? Anyway, that's a Yes, I do answer. remember. No, I do remember Don Juan sitting on a bench in Oaxaca talking about that's some right. of that. That's, and seeing the people and, and, and knowing the course of their lives, et cetera, et cetera, right? Do you go to that bench where Don Juan sat? I'm sorry, it's long disintegrated by now, but we do go to the area. And you can sit anywhere in Oaxaca 
because if you've got the energy, you can do it in New York City. <laughs> but what about that house in Mexico that, um, you know, Tasha spent a lot of time in Florinda and Carlos and probably Carol, they, that the uh, Sears owned, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I personally don't know. I can only imagine that when they left that they liquidated it, you know? I know that the house that Carlos lived in when he was alive in Los Angeles, he, how do you say, tailored his house to, how do you say, it, um, mimic, mirror that house down there. So the room. And what happened there. with that house? Where is that? Oh, that that house is still there, but it's sold. It was sold to an, you know another people. They took it over. Exactly. So, oh, um, so yeah. Carlos's house mimicked the house in in Mexico. That's right, and he planted all the trees because the house in Mexico had a grapefruit tree and had um, uh, two lemon trees and had some uh, kumquat trees. And uh, all the trees he planted in the yard were saplings from the tree from the, the house in Mexico. So, just so you're you would consider yourself the next generation of Sears in this lineage, or because I think according to Don Juan, the lineage sort of ended with Carlos, That's but correct. maybe it didn't. That's correct. No. As a lineage, as a group of small, as a small group of people doing something together, the lineage has ended. And as a small group of people ascending at the end of their lives together, the lineage has ended. Carlos left alone. I will leave alone. But what Carlos and Carol and Taisha Florida did was make this work public. So, and this is what we teach, you know, in this integrity classes, you want to seriously do this work, you can follow the same path as they did. The only difference is you will leave alone. Well, I think it was... Well, what's on the other side, you know? But I think it was Don Juan's intention to get Carlos to make this public, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know what Don Juan saw, but yeah, he told Carlos to just write a book. And Carlos, you know, and he used his me, me, me mind. Oh, I'm going to be a fool. Oh, I can't write. Oh, God. And and Don Juan said, yeah, Carlos, just write a shitty book. You can write a shitty book, can't you? You know what I mean? And he did. And um, you Well, know, I thought he was I mean, incredible. I think he's an incredible writer. I mean, and, and um, the way he's developed. But the, his just the way he was able to capture that and to make himself look like a fool was very uh-huh. important because he put himself in everybody's position, you know? Exactly. But it, but believe me, that is exactly how you feel in front of these people. In front of Don Juan, that's how he felt. Me in front of Carlos and Carol, that's how I feel. These people have been doing this work for 45 years. Mm-hmm. It, the distance is palpable. The difference and the lineage, of course, goes back thousands of years. I mean, Yeah, right? exactly. Tens of thousands, you know. Tens of thousands of years, about 10,000 years old. Yeah, exactly. Right. And are there other uh, parts of the lineage still around, like some of the other apprentices with Carlos? Do you know about that? Um, those apprentices, I mean, they are around, but they're not, they're, they're, how can I say, they're just doing other aspects of their lives. They're not involved at this moment in the teaching of Tensegrity. They're just uh-huh. not. Yeah. They're not. Well, Tensegrity no. was... It's only mentioned in the latest book, but what do you think of uh, like the Don Miguel Ruiz? He calls himself a Toltec. Yeah, I mean, I don't know his pers- his story. Um, I think some. Why wouldn't he be a Toltec? I mean, I don't know. Maybe his family line is descended from that. A lot of people are able to get information from dreams, um, from their own personal sleeping dreams, and maybe that's where he gets his information from, which is really cool. Um, I really don't know. Oh, let me just ask you one more. I mean, I know we can talk on and on. And thank you for your time. Oh, cause the, oh yeah. I guess we have gone over. But anyway, it's, you're truly no, interesting. No. It's okay for me to go over because my program could go as long as I want. But you, okay. you might have. You might have things to do. But when Carlos jumped off the mountain, I think he says that in his last book, um, you know, he in, in Tales of Power, he talks in his right. fourth book, he talks about jumping into the abyss. And then in his last book, the something of infinity, what is it called? The act of side infinity. Yes. He talks about how when he jumped off the into the abyss in Mexico, he landed in his place in Los Angeles. That's is correct. that correct? That's correct. 
So he was able to move his mind and body so he didn't crash at the bottom of that abyss, but found himself in Los Angeles by some incredible movement of energy. That's correct. And he found himself in his bed, correct? Right. I think that's what he says. So I know that's possible, and I know that's possible for everyone to do it when you practice enough, of course. Yeah, when you practice enough. Now, the question always becomes, did Carlos have a dream of being Don Juan Lee and jump off a cliff? Wait, did he have a dream of being Don Juan's what? Did Carlos have a sleeping dream of watching... Don Juan leaves and oh. Carlos himself jumping off the cliff. He wakes up in his bed in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. This is the interesting thing that I think it can confuse a lot of people. Other things in the book, when um, Carlos Castaneda is watching Juan Janeiro climb the waterfall with his luminous filaments from his, his belly, you know, uh-huh. he's climbing, he's going, hopping from one side of the waterfall to the other. And he's sending out the tentacles from his belly, you know, to the next stone before he moves his body. Uh-huh. Those are states very likely of heightened awareness. Did, did Juan Hanero do that in normal reality? He did it in dream reality. Dreaming awake reality or dreaming asleep reality? Or was Casaneda dreaming awake while he was watching Don Hanero? That's you know? correct, too. That's another way to look at it. Exactly. So he could have been on the edge ledge watching Don Juan, and then he wakes up you know, in his bed. Or so. he could have <laughs> been on that abyss, that, plat- that mesa, with Don Juan and his warrior's party, and mm-hmm. jumped off, and then mm-hmm. moved his body to Los Angeles. I mean, why not? Yeah. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Why not? Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is all those possibilities exist. And only he knows, and maybe you never really know what happens to you when you step into the energy of your energy body. Because what Tasha would say, she goes, this becomes the conundrum for the dreamer. When you go to those other worlds in your sleeping dream, my God, they feel so real. They're palpable. You can smell and taste. It's almost like... Oh, my God, you're so there. And the energy is so bristling and so keen and so amazingly vibrating. And, you, and if someone was to walk in the room where, you're, where your body is sleeping the dream, would they find your body in the bed? Who knows? Well, who does know? And especially when you look at the details that you notice in the dreams, the mundane details... Mm -hmm. that seem irrelevant, but if you're Mm -hmm. dreaming them, Mm -hmm. somehow you're able to notice them. You know what movie it reminded me of, that movie Boyhood? Did you see that movie Boyhood that just came out by Richard Linklater? No, is that Linklater? Is that what his was about? Yes, well, it's about, I mean, sort of about, well, an altered state of reality, I would say, but it's also the very mundane world that's uh-huh. so, so ordinary, it's sort of extraordinary, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. recommend that as like a uh, contemplation if you're, but it I also might be very. I think that's interesting, because I'm, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles, but I'm sure it's around here someplace, of course. Yeah, but yeah. maybe it's boring, maybe, I don't know, it wasn't boring for me, but it was something, sort of like Both watching home movies, but not, yeah. but it was a kind of, twist on that uh-huh. because yeah. it was a kind yeah, of the, high the director, end. Yeah, the director, he did he did a lot of other interesting films. In fact, one film based upon the book um, Art of Dreaming. So, oh, he did? Um, what, yeah. Waking Life? He did Scanner Darkly. He did Scanner Darkly. Link Letter. Didn't he do Scanner Darkly? The same Maybe. Guy? He also did Waking Life. Was that based on yeah. uh, um, Very that much. Castaneda book? A lot of the information in there was Carlos Castaneda, yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, this book is sort of, uh, I mean, this movie is kind of very, I mean, interested to see what you would think of that. It's very, yeah. very ordinary. Yeah. And it's very. But I love what you say. It's so ordinary that it's so extraordinary. That's yes. And that's mm-hmm. the thing about some of these dream states that I notice. They seem, when, but you know you're in the dream state, but you're looking at these ordinary 
details. And I, w- I would say to myself, why am I dreaming about these ordinary details except like the fact that, oh, you're looking down at your floor and you see the cracks in your floor or the paint on the ceiling, but they exist in these other dream states too. I'm mean, only saying that they do assemble themselves as realities that are concrete. I guess that's why I'm mentioning that. Yeah, I, I would say so. And I would say, um, like I, I described before, in some of the first level of dreaming that you do, most of the places that you visit are the things that you, where, how you say it, you assemble reality. Your assembly point shifts to the point where you assemble a new reality is places that remind you of the normal world. So yes, it will have wood boards in the floor and it will have light pockets and doorknobs and all this kind of stuff. When you get out in, as you do more recapitulation, then you get into these other states where you're still looking at the floor, but believe me, it is not floorboards anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, right. So, it, yeah, but you are exactly right. You're exactly right. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's like the other thing I learned from the art of dreaming was that if you really are in a lucid dream state, if you look at something, it'll start to change. And if you notice it exactly. changing, then you know you're dreaming. Then you know you're that's being correct. and dreaming. Because and that's, mm-hmm. do you find that to happen to you? Yes, and as I described before, the very same thing happens in Dreaming Away, where you look at a building and the building starts to dissolve and you see another time. Uh huh. And that's a cue for you that you're actually in your dream state. For, for myself, I think everyone's cue is rather individualistic. Personally, my cue is that my body or the being who I call me in the moment or whoever, the being who's doing the dreaming feels mm-hmm. very different than, than just me in the flesh. Um, oh, you, and it's, your state of mind feels very different, you're saying. Yeah, it's it's rather a sensation. And, um, yeah, and it's like I'm able to perceive 360 degrees all around me, whereas in normal awareness, I'm lucky if I'm bicameral and I've got some peripheral vision going on, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um but in the dream state, it's 360, and you know what's behind you, and you know what's above you and below you, and it's just all at the same time. All this information goes all at the same time. But that's personal to myself. Right, right, right. I'm just curious, how many apprentices are there with, uh, you know, this work? Well, I mean, through the years, I mean, when I came in again in 1988, um, Oh gosh, maybe there were maybe there were ten or fifteen people came, people left, people came. You know, when Carlos was alive, they came and went. You know, yeah. Um, they sampled it. It wasn't for them. They left, um, et cetera. And uh, so, I mean, but I think like yourself, you had a conversation with Taisha. It seems like you had a conversation with Carol Tiggs. I yeah, think Zan Florinda, I had a conversation with. Yeah. yeah, your lives are forever touched in some way. Forever. You, I mean, you remember it. Why, 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 don't do. you, why didn't you forget it? Why didn't you forget it like you drank milk this morning? No, you remember well, it. <laughs> you know? Well, because there is an energetic, there was yes. an energetic awareness with these women. But I Yes. Think. And their energy touched your energy body and helped your assemblage point to move to wherever mm-hmm. their assemblage point was. That is what happened. So, I mean, is that was that just a temporary thing, or is that a permanent thing, you're saying? So that's a temporary thing. In their presence, that will happen to you. Uh-huh. And then you at least have an awareness that that is happening. Um, I mean, the person it's like trains not, you, in a sense. The person who's having it happen to them for the first time probably doesn't have a clue. It just goes, uh-huh. oh, I feel mighty weird, and <laughs> perception is altered. And then when you leave the room and you're out of there, their sphere, then you're back to normal again. Does that still happen with Carol sometimes when you hang out? Yes, with Carol sometimes. Yes, yeah. um, as but as as and as the apprentice gets uh, more energy themselves, then the change would be less and less. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because because you get, it becomes you get more your normal state. With yeah, but 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 being with Carol is a unique energetic experience. Well, yes, it is very energetically the, unique. The, 
you know, the other thing they talked about was that women have a greater facility facility for dreaming because of their womb. And and then, of course, Castaneda talked about some women are dreamers, some are stalkers. Have, have you um, worked with that energy? Yeah, well, what Carlos, I mean, that's, that was very, very traditional. And Carlos, um, you know, as, as each Nawal, they kind of, I'm not going to say, they enhance the line in different ways. Of and what course, Carlos of course. did, yeah, and what Carlos Hennance did is he made all the women and all the men become both dreamers and stalkers. So if you came in oh. as a dreamer, good golly gosh, you better learn how to go out and stalk yourself. If you came in as a stalker, good golly gosh, you better learn gr- learn how to dream. Because oh. again, we were not in the formation of being in a small band of people where some were dreamers and some were stalkers. We are now each an individual. And we need to learn all these skills ourselves. Which, oh, because you know, that's Florinda gift. seemed like a dreamer and Tasha seemed like a stalker. I mean, they wrote yeah, their very, books from those. Yes, but it was very interesting when Tasha and Florinda dreamt together. They uh-huh. would, and uh, you're going to laugh, they would always go to Tasha's places, Tasha's world. And Tasha's worlds were shopping malls. Sh- shopping oh, malls really? somewhere in the second attention, okay? <laughs> there were shopping malls in the second attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somewhere out there, believe me, they don't look like the ones like Barney's New Yorker with Macy's. You know, not like that. Very different shopping malls. Okay. Uh huh. And why? Yeah. We, what? Why? Why shopping mall? I'm just curious. Don't. No, I mean, okay. No, well, I'm. You. You said that Florinda seemed like a dreamer and Tyson yes. seemed like a stalker. Yeah. And so, a, what a stalker yeah. does is a stalker handles very many things in the normal reality, but from extraordinary reality. Oh, you see I what see mean? what you mean. Like, like shopping, like, um, you know, handling the bookkeeping, doing that kind of thing. You see? Oh, okay. And, but so yes. what was so interesting yes. is when they both dreamt together, you think you would go to the place of the dreamer, Florinda. No, they always went to the place of Taisha, the shopping malls. And Florinda would come back. She goes, darn it, it happened again. She goes, I want to go to my places. <laughs> That is funny. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you have lots of great stories to tell. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe we'll, we'll meet some point. That's fun. uh, Okay. Yeah. And, uh, um, I'm so appreciative uh, of your time. Thank you so much for your time. No, no, I, 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 no, thank you for your time. I mean, because for me, this is just talking about what I love, you know? So, uh, it's, you know, it, it's instead of having to read a book, I can just talk to you about all the, uh, yeah. all the stories that you've heard over the years and been a part of. And, um, and many, many people out there still, um, trust this material as authentic because the practices are real and they have an effect on, on anyone who does these. So yes. I, I believe in them. True. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And, and and the magical passes is what you'll be teaching or be taught at this uh, t- upcoming Tensegrity uh, workshop. And Tensegrity means dynamic tension, right? It was a Buckminster That's Fuller correct. word. It's totally a Buckminster Fuller word. And he was more of like an architect. Or, but what he saw was the interconnectivity between physical structures, whether they're trees, whether they were buildings, whether they were their geodesic domes. And this explains the same thing that we are interconnected we, within ourselves. If I stub my toe, that that vibration ripples all the way up my body to my left ear or whatever. You know what I mean? Everything is connected. And me as a living being, I'm connected with you all the time. Not just when I'm talking, but all of the time. I'm connected to the trees 7,000 miles away all of the time. So yes, and, Mr. and the fact that form, yes, no, no, I get that, and the fact that you're going to be doing the theater of infinity workshop means that um, you can create a new future or shift the assemblage point to a place you want it to be. Exactly. exactly. Well, I think it sounds like a great workshop. I mean, uh, oh. I, I, it's September twenty seventh and twenty eighth. And people can register by going to cleargreen.com? Exactly. That's that simple. Yeah. Or castaneda.com. We've got them both. <laughs> so, so the books are still being published, huh? 
the Castaneda books? In some cut and some languages, yes. In um, in the United States, not not so much. No, um, you know, not so much right now. No, but they're still very popular in Russia and Mexico and some of the other countries. They're very they're still being published and printed. It, it, is not- Carol writing a book? She said she was going to write a book or did write a book. I know. I want her to write a book. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I mean, I know that she's not currently, but, yeah. um, but I, you know, I mean, that doesn't mean that, you know, Naeem and myself, we could ask her if we could share some of her stories and we would write down her stories. Um, that's that- another way of doing it, too. You know? Well, she said she had a book back then in 93, 1993. Yeah, and uh, I mean, they wrote a lot. Uh, not everything got published. Uh, they didn't no. want to have it published, but they wrote a lot. Yeah. Carol wrote a lot, you're saying? Yeah, well, no, and Tyson, I mean, obviously Tyson, they, all four of them wrote a lot. Yeah, and some of it hasn't been published. You're, is that what yes, you mean? Yes, that's right. And that was well, their choice, and so we have to honor right. that. But it would be great to find some of those old. I mean, because yeah, definitely get, get the art of dreaming seems like get a story or two. Of, you know, it, it was definitely chopped up. The art of dreaming. I could see you could see there was a whole chunk missing from that mm-hmm. book mm-hmm. that was taken out. Anyway, incredible material. I really life changing for anyone who's ever picked up a Castaneda book. It was a, a totally different perspective on reality and you know there's a lot of people who say oh this stuff never happened i don't know how they could say that because all you have to do is read this and you can feel the shift of awareness happening exactly all you have to do is do the magical passes and recapitulation you will feel the shift exactly yeah so it's like carlos says oh gosh don't trust my word for it do it yourself see what happens well, that is what's so powerful about the, even the written material. Car- mm-hmm. <laughs> I think Carol yeah. said, "Don't listen to us. Read the books. Follow what's in mm-hmm. the books." You know. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, so, 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 thank you, Rene, for your time and mm-hmm. you know your right. your commitment to truth and uh, well, there's and effect, there's awareness effect. and work has and intention. So right? Yeah. What's well, that? Appreciate. I said this work has affected me so much that I don't want to leave either without at least affecting one other human being. Watch one other human being get to an amazing place with this work, you know? So we give the seminars. Is this your full-time job or do you do other things? This is my full-time job, yes. This is your full-time. So do you travel around the world doing Tensegrity workshops? Oh, yeah, I just, I just came down from St. Petersburg and gave workshops there and, you know, I see a lot of people individually, one-on-one, that kind of thing also. So, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, want little like, extra personal help, you know, either with their sensegrity practice or with things that are going on in their lives, you know. And they want, you I know, see. someone who can read energy to kind of help them through some steps and, you know, mm-hmm. that's stuff like that. So you went to St. Petersburg, Russia or Florida? Yeah, St. Petersburg, Russia, the jewel uh, of Russia, yes. It is an incredible town, isn't it? Oh, oh my gosh. I've, I've been there, oh, the Hermitage, it? and yeah, it's a beautiful, oh, yeah. beautiful city. Yeah, uh, the and ha- room, and yeah. How many people, how many Russians were attending a workshop like that? Pretty much, uh, they're around about 180, uh, about 200, depending upon the theme of the workshop, and I think yourself, everyone likes the topics of dreaming a little more, they're a little more interested in those kinds of topics. Um, but what Carlos impressed upon us is, please don't try to attempt too much dreaming and you probably can't without recapitulating because if, you know, some, some people just go, Oh, give me the techniques to go out and have a great sleeping dream. And I go, well, I, I can, but you're just going to have a first level dream and you're just going to be staring at your shoes in your dream. What, what's so fun about that? You know? So let's, let's focus on your recapitulation. Let's let kind of dust you off. Let's kind of clean you up a little oh. bit. I see. So by freeing the assemblage point in recapitulation, you have more power to do the deeper levels of dreams. Oh, is that yes. what you're saying? Because the dreaming is anything dreaming is moving that assemblage point. Dreaming is, is by definition the movement of that assemblage point to a completely different position. 
I remember Tasha saying she had her assemblage point moved to a place of a of a blackbird or a, or a crow or something, and it was stuck yeah, there. yeah. Oh gosh, Tasha had those wonderful beings, um, Globus and Phoebus. Remember in the second attention, and that huge pigeon. Oh, anyway, these are all these stories. These are all these did stories. You, when you did you ever Tyson, see her? You would see these did you ever hang out with her in the second attention and be and see uh, those beings? Well, you could hang out in the first attention with her, and they were in the second attention. That was the point. And so, yeah, did you see them as well, or feel you, them, you, you, even you, if you were in the I first attention? The that, I see the things that they see in the moment. Yes. Oh, Is you see question? them because they're helping to shift your assemblage point, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Just like when you met Carol, you sensed a a glimmer of truth. You sensed a real. You sensed her reality was an absolute reality. You see what I mean? No, I I sensed the death defier coming through yeah. her. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. That was that's her reality. That's right. Yeah. So when Tasha would have those second attention awarenesses of those beings, you would be aware of them as well. Yes. Yeah. That's fun. Oh, that's way fun. That's way fun. That's way fun. So you think I mean, you run into them at some point, Florinda and Tasha, huh? I well, you know, people ask me, well, when I die or something, and I burn from within, where, where will I ever? Where will it, can I find them on the other side? And the thing is, is that each lineage has a particular vibration and has a particular flavor, has a particular mood. And there's like when you get to the other side, you will sense it. You will feel it. It's like there's not a trail of breadcrumbs up there. But there, you know what I mean? That's kind of, you know, silly. But uh-huh. there will be a, like a snail trail. You know what I mean? of where you need to go to find these people again. Do you also sense Don Juan and his party ever? Do you ever tune into that? For some reason, not so much. I'm very, just very, very aware of Carlos, obviously, on the other side. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, tangentially aware of Taisha and Florinda, but mostly, mostly, mostly Carlos. And, uh, I mean, probably because he was my direct teacher. And then our apprentices, you know, the, the people who are in Tensegrity now are very aware of myself and Nae in their dream space. It seems oh, to be, I see. It seems to be how the tradition works. Uh-huh. What happened to Kylie? I met her when, she, uh, yeah, oh, I did meet Kylie. Yeah. Yeah. It was, well, when Carlos left, she went traveling with uh, Taishla and Florinda. Oh, so she could be anywhere then. She oh. could be anywhere. She was pretty fierce, wasn't she? She was intense. Yes, yeah, she had an intensity. I didn't get to know her that well. And what did you think of that awful book that Amy Irving, was it? Not Amy Irving. Amy, Amy Wallace. Amy Wallace. Yeah, wrote, Amy yeah. Wallace. Yes. That was yeah. just. It, yeah. Well, it's like uh, Carlos Castaneda knew her father. He knew Irving Wallace. And therefore, he knew his, uh, Irving Wallace's daughter, Amy. And Carlos really wanted to teach Amy, you know, these practices to help her. You know, and um, I, I mean, I think, you know, you can go read the book. The people can go read the book themselves. But she had, she was one of those people, unfortunately, that we talked about earlier in this conversation that some people who do some drugs, they find it really hard to move their assemblage point with this work mm-hmm. because their assemblage point is mo- so used to being moved with the drug. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was kind of her case. So she would come, and Carlos would invite her everywhere. She would come to our movement practices. She would come to dinners with us. She would come on outings with us. And in in his presence, it was questionable what she experienced and what she felt. Because when we all got home to our own private residences, and we were not in Carlos's presence anymore, or Taisha's or Carlos or Linda's, we, she, and I, she would call me up on the phone, and she would have this, totally normal perception of what had just transpired for the last three hours. Or as mm. for myself, I had this totally other perception of what transpired for the last three hours. So, um, I mean, that book is her truth and it stands as her truth. It's I her truth say- full of her self-importance. You could definitely see this, the, you know, her ego defense coming in I, yeah. and I thought well this woman really missed the whole point of the teachings in writing this book you know yeah. 
it's a lot of gossip, all that. But where is the truth of the of the of the teachings? And I think she totally missed that. You know. Yeah. She. She. It's so interesting because in the book, like she'll talk about the jewelry, or she'll talk about these very real incidences. She'll talk mm-hmm. about conversations, but but her truths of those conversations, what she got out of those conversations in the book, are not the same truths that Carlos Castaneda gets from talking to Don Juan. Why right. wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be? You see? Right. No, no, I get that. And I get that she missed the whole idea of what the energy body was all about because mm-hmm. maybe it was, I don't know what her life was like or is like. Right, so, right. But, you know, Carol did say that if you do even smoke too much marijuana, it flattens the the fibers at your, right. you know, midsection that you can't yeah. move your assemblage point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, well, it's very, it's very interesting that his first book came out in what you might call the in the nineteen sixties, which we might call the American drug culture. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, there was a whole uh, peyote thing. Yes, he really yeah, put and, that and on the map. People loved his book because it was first book from college from a university press that talked about drugs. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Revelation, you know. Then three books later, when he writes the book Journey of Ixalan, his preface is, wow, I finally realized I can shift my awareness without the drugs. It has nothing to do with the drugs. Oh, my God. It just has to do with doing these practices. Oh, my right. God. Revelation. That- that's why I tell people to start with Journey to Ixlan because, I agree. you know, that's where he really gets to the heart of the matter there. Yeah. Agreed. 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 Very wise for you to say that. Very wise. No, that's where it started for me because I wasn't interested in the peyote um, mm-hmm. drug culture and all that. And, of course, Don Juan says later that was just to shock you. In, out of the ordinary state of awareness that you were so brainwashed into thinking was the only reality. So That's right. And you see, those, those measures or the drugs were never used on Tysha or Carol or Florinda. It just wasn't necessary. As Carol describes it, she went to visit Don Juan, she'd sit down next to him, and immediately she'd be in another dream state. It was just like that simple. But when you read yeah. Carlos's account, he's sitting next to Don Juan, and he's in his, he's in his UCLA professorial questions. Well, tell me, Don Juan, I'm, 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 I'm here to collect peyote. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> plants. Yeah. You know, I, I want to classify these plants, sir. Tell me. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh. What a difference. Yeah. But then he got through that. I mean, he was quite Completely. dense. Completely. But then he got, went through, got through that into like, the, the truth of the teaching. So, um, yeah. Completely. And, and those books are really, really, I mean, I could read them over and over again. That whole series. Yeah, exactly. And you probably have a stack of well-worn books on your. <laughs> on your I do. I have, a, I have lots of. I have lots of those books from many different. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Well, thank you again. So um, maybe we'll pick up this conversation at some point. That sounds and, uh, interesting to me. And then to your your partner there, uh, who's coming to New York to teach this, is um, Rainy. No, you're Rainy. Uh, Nae. Nae. Nae's coming, and and she's been a, a student since '88 as well, 1988. Um, yeah, about around the same time. Most of the current uh, apprentices came around the same time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, is Tracy still involved in the Clear Green group? Um, Tracy, I mean, we talked to Tracy. Tracy's here. He does his own private practice. Oh, yeah. but he's, I mean, we're he's not part of the clear group. Bruce, I mean. No, Bruce Wagner. We're still, I mean, you know, we're still in touch with all these people, you know? Okay. I didn't know so Bruce, but I knew Tracy. Stuff. I met Tracy back in... Uh, yes, Tracy Kramer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tracy Kramer. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Anyway, okay, so I will, I mean, but she probably has a whole different side to tell. Um, she has a whole uh, different n- story n- yeah. to tell, exactly. Totally. She, I mean, get each of us receive different, just like Car- uh, Carol Tiggs, Taisha, mm-hmm. Florinda, and Carlos, all receive completely different teachings. And mm-hmm. remember that Don Juan, tr- I mean, I'm not going to say he physically changed himself, but he changed his perception to become a different identity for each one. For Carlos, he was Don Juan. Then he was John Michael Avalar for Taisha. Then oh, he wow. won, um, was Mel- Melkiski for okay. Carol Tiggs. 
and he was Maurice Aureliano for Florinda. So where does it see, talk about what he was for Carol, though? I don't remember that. Where where is that? Oh say well, that? he he says that in the lecture, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am Barbara. really interested in what Carol has to say. I mean, she yeah. it, she's really the lineage holder, isn't she? At the moment, absolutely. I totally agree with you, yes. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, who else know has studied with Don Juan, right? Excuse me? I mean, there's no one else on the planet who had that direct connection to Don Juan like she did. That's correct. I mean, so... Anyway, it's very exciting. Okay. I think. I think this. I think, Eddie, it, I think too. <laughs> that makes two of us. Well, good. I'm glad you've made it your life, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm very glad. I mean, how? I don't know. Um, you see, I, I think from just personally, I, uh, you know, I did a lot of shopping before I met Carlos. Is that what you call it? You know, you go try some. Uh, you know, pipe Roots. ceremonies and some sweat lodges, and you go try mm-hmm. some schools from South America, and you go, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh-huh. You know, you try some Buddhism for a while. And then when I met him and his work, I go, oh my God, this is it. This is the real deal. And it just, that's just what it was for me. You know what I mean? Like I said, we're all, everyone we're in consciousness, we're all going the same place. But please find your path, but please stick to it. You know, all right. this just shopping around, you're not going to get it. You're not going to develop that fast. God bless you. You just find the one you like. Well, it's okay to shop a little bit, but when you find the one you like, then stay with that. Yes. Exactly. Because yes. there is a feeling of home. It feels like home when you find yours. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so amazing. Yeah. It's like a long, it's this is home. This is, ah, it just fills you every day with that feeling that like I'm on the right path, whatever that path might be. You know? So you and you still feel that, don't you? Huh? Yeah, I can tell. completely. All right. Completely. Yeah. Oh. Well, thanks it's for almost like, yeah, Remember, can I take it? Can I digress for another minute? Sure. No, please go ahead. You remember the movie Lost Horizons, right? Nineteen thirty-four, right? Probably uh-huh, uh-huh. black and white about the airplane crash. They crash in the Himalayas, and and the survivors go and they find this big Tibetan. City and um, this priest. Shangri La, yes. Shangri La, exactly. Okay. And yes. the woman and people in that okay. city live for hundreds and hundreds of years and they have really high consciousness and all this okay. kind of things. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 exactly. So, but oh, there's a okay. woman. There's a no. woman there. Y- yes. Ahead. There's a woman who's been in Shangri La for many years and she wants to leave. Uh huh. So, okay. so the flyers, the air, the aviation people, when they leave, because they mm-hmm. do leave, some of them leave, they leave, they take this woman with them. And along the way, this woman changes from being young and beautiful, which she was mm-hmm. in Shangri-La, to being an old, decrepit woman. And she dies on the way, because uh-huh. that's what she is in normal awareness. Y- so yeah. it's like when I'm just going to say that personally for myself, being in integrity is like Shangri-La for me. It okay. <laughs> feels like that place. Well, no, I, 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 thank you. I, I, actually, my producer just said we we have to wrap it up because. Oh, uh, but, we are going to wrap it up, Mr. Producer. No, no, okay. I, I, I'm glad. No, I'm glad to talk to you. And um, but I get what you're saying because it's like mm-hmm. you you found something that gives you youth and vitality and joy and love. Mm-hmm. And exactly. Um, and I wish well, that for everybody. Please go find it, what it is for you. You know? Thank you, Renee. I've been talking to okay. Renee Maurice. 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 Mm-hmm. Maurice. Mm-hmm. Renee Maurice from Tensegrity, the Theater of Infinity, the Carlos Castaneda work. Uh, they're coming to New York September 27th and 28th. You can go to cleargreen, cleargreen.com. Look for Magical Passes. It's going to be an amazing workshop, and they're all over the country. So thanks again. Talk to you um, soon.